Welcome to the Natty Daddy Experience. You rocking with your boy Natty Rob on this job. And today, we have a man who was once a game banger, but after his encounter with death and seeing himself in hell, he changed his life around. Dominic, how you doing, man? Man, I'm blessed. I'm blessed, man. Thank you for having me, brother. All good. All good. Um, so we just going to jump right into it. Um, are you originally from Chicago? Yes. Born and raised originally from Chicago, man. Born on the oh. south side. Grew up in Uptown, North Pole. Okay, okay. And what, what, I don't want to age yourself, but what era did you grow up in? I grew up in the 90s, man. The wild 90s, man. It's, it's, uh, it actually was worse then than it was then, than it is now, to be honest, when it comes to the gunplay. Like, statistically, you can even look it up, man. It was, it was wild, man. For real. Okay, I, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, facts. <laughs> All right, so you grew up on uh, the south side of Chicago. Uh, you basically grew up hustling. You was a product of your environment. And, yeah, uh, I was uh, born on the south side, but all of the all of my dirt that I did was in Uptown, the North Pole, of Chicago. Man, I was definitely a product of my environment. Man, it was uh, it was hard. You know what I mean? Um, especially not having both parents in the home, which is systematic. You know, I'm sure we know that in our culture all too well. You know, it's usually single mother trying to do everything by herself. So then the streets became my father. You know, I was looking up to the wrong people. I was out there, you know, thought, you know, my heroes, you know, was, was the drug dealers, man. It was the pimps. You know, I wanted the cars. I wanted, the, I wanted everything. It was just about the materials. Then I'm watching the rap videos. I wanted everything they had. You know, I wanted that fantasy, man, for real. I was chasing it, true, for real, hard, you know. Yeah, I'm sure that's, that's the, the typical. When you're growing up in the hood, that's just the typical thing that you see in the hood you want to be like the man with the money and the women yeah definitely man it's 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 all a lie though now that i know man you know brothers and sisters out there everything that he's showing us was systematically created to keep us blind and to kill each other not only that man it's a spiritual component to everything you know i don't want y'all to think it's a fairy tale because you know like i said i was out there serving and i'm not gonna say what organization i was in but came to a point one day you know i was you know I was at a level, I was making some money and about to get dressed and go to the club. Y'all know how it is. When you go to the club, you go shopping for new outfits. We was getting geared up for that night, you know, but I kept seeing this one dude following me, man. I, I came out the store, this dude was sitting on his car and I'm like, I just had a weird feeling. So I said, what's up to him? You know, cool. But then I went to another store, me and my guy. I come out, it's the same dude, almost on the other side of our, our, our district. He outside on the car again. And I'm looking at him, I'm like, wait a minute, man. I, I tap my guy like, man, this brother following us, man. He was like, man, quit playing. You paranoid, man. You know, I was, you know, I was smoking weed back in the day. I was real paranoid. He's like, you paranoid. Ain't nobody, you ain't all that. Ain't nobody thinking about you, Joe. Quit, quit playing. So I'm like, all right, whatever. Shook it off. A couple of hours later, we get dressed. I come downstairs. This guy's in front of my building. I said, okay, I'm out there approach this guy and ask him. Okay, you you got to be following me or something. I never seen you around here before. I just my third time seeing you today. So as I'm approaching him, I'm walking up to him. He got a blunt in his mouth, and he said, hey, "You got a light, folks." I'm like, "Wait a minute." Okay, so as I'm digging in my pocket, all I saw was a green flash. I didn't even hear the first shot. It was a green flash of light. You know what I mean? And uh, all of a sudden, I start smelling. I don't know if y'all you know what matches smell like when you burn a whole book of matches. I smelled matches. It's like sulfur smell. And then he got me again, and he looked me right in my face with this, like, I got you. Like, like an evil man was so evil the way he looked at me. But before I keep him, I was falling backwards. All I know is it got so dark, but I was falling, about to lay flat on my back, but I was falling forward. Mm. It's, it's hard to explain, man. It's a spiritual component to this. I just want everybody to know this is no joke. This is no games out here. You know, I'm falling backwards, but yet I'm falling forwards. You know, it's hard to explain. But as I'm falling, man, I, I instantly, like instantaneously was in this darkness. It was so dark. There's nothing on earth that the, it, the darkness that can explain it. Like I said, you can blindfold yourself. You can put yourself under the ground and blindfold yourself again. And it still don't touch this darkness. Because this darkness had a different element to it. It was alive. It was, it was gripping. It was alive. Like, it, it, was, it, was, it's, it surrounds you. It goes through you, in you. 
And as I'm falling, I'm falling so fast, man. I just feel everything coming up out of me. When I say everything good was coming out of me, like hope, love, everything that we take for granted, the feelings that we don't even know that we have that come from God were leaving me, man. As I'm falling, I'm talking about I'm falling faster than the speed of light. And they say the speed of light is like 186,000 miles per second. And it, it, no, it was faster than that. But as I'm falling, everything is leaving me. And I'm getting more and more afraid. Afraid is just a word I'm going to use because there's no word to describe it here on earth. It was terror. It was beyond terror, man. It's, it's, it's a different fabric of fear on the spiritual side. Everything is intense by a million. So as I'm falling, I start noticing this smell. That's the first thing that hit me was this smell, man. And this smell, it was so bad. Like, if you was to smell it right now, you would die. Oh, you instantly, you would die. In the physical world, you would die. You could take all the dead bodies, all the dead animals, garbage, stir it up, heat it up, and it still won't get close to this smell. Because people, don't, I want to explain to people, you do not lose your five senses because you die. Actually, they get worse. They get heightened. So you still can taste, touch, see, hear, smell, but it's way more exaggerated. You know what I mean? Like amplified, big time. So as I'm falling in this smell, I'm already beyond terror, but in this smell, then that's when I start noticing and start hearing some noises, kind of like faints, yells, and just, but then I saw this little drop of light, it was a little pin drop of light, and as I'm falling towards the light, it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger, but then I instantly can see that it's like a portal, it's an opening, but it's like rocks, it's like rocks, a rock opening, like I'm falling into a cave. But these rocks was like yellow and piping hot. They was yellow, orange, white. It was like you can tell they were hot. Like they just been in fire. And I felt the heat come from it. That's when I, 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 and then I started hearing the yells and the screams. It had to be millions of people. See, that's what I was telling you about how your senses are hiding. The heightened is that when, you, when I was hearing those screams, you can individualize those screams. Since you can be here, like here on earth, we can hear like a crowd. Let's say if you're in a stadium and you can hear people cheering and you, it just seems like a blur of noise. No, if you wanted to on the other side when you're in a spirit body, you can literally hear each individual simultaneously if you wanted to. You can hear all the noise at once, but yet individually at the same time. It's hard to explain, man. It's beyond our comprehension. Yeah. So as I fall through this portal and I'm hit, I hit the ground. Boom. I'm talking about with so much force, but yet when I got up, I really didn't feel anything at first, but when I was getting up, I felt like I was wearing, I weighed like a hundred pounds. No, I felt like I weighed a thousand pounds. Like I was wearing a, a fat suit. No offense to anyone. I'm not trying to roast anyone. No offense to your audience, but it felt like I was 900 pounds. I couldn't move. I couldn't, I couldn't move as fast as I could. And the one thing I noticed in the spirit world, you know, here we have nerves, right? So if I was to pinch you on your hand, you would feel it only in your hand. But in the spiritual realm, you feel it through your whole body at one time. There's no separate. Do you see what I mean? If somebody comes smack you in the face, you feel it in your face. Well, in the spirit realm, somebody smack you in your face, you feel it through your whole body at the same time. There's no separate parts. There's no nerves. See, we're used to having nerves in a physical body. It's nothing like it. I'm trying to get up. I can't even get up. I'm trying to breathe. Well, there's no oxygen down there, but I'm so used to being in the body. I'm trying to breathe, and I'm, there's no breathing down there. So that makes the anxiety even more worse because you feel like you're suffocating because you're so used to being in the body. So subconsciously, I'm thinking I'm in my body, but no, I'm in my spirit body, and I'm trying to breathe. So that's making me, but what really freaked me out because it was the same darkness, but you can see every once in a while, you can hear, and it was this pit right in front of me. But when this pit lit up, it lit up pretty much all, as far as your eye can see, there were thousands of pits. As far as your eyes can see. And that's when I started noticing all these pits, and they were lighting up all around me. But in these pits were people. It had to be 100 to 100 some people in each pit. But they were, they were really, really started getting to me. And I want people to know, when you're in the spirit world, see here, you only can get so much fear. What I mean by that, your fear caps off at a certain point. You only can get so terrified. But when you're in the spirit world, there is no capping off. It gets Just when you think it gets worse and you're terrified, it goes up. And it goes up or not. And it goes up. And it doesn't stop. 
There's no capping. See, that's my point. We, we take God for granted. Those little things, we always take them for granted. God is in every detail and everything that we do that we take for granted. So even not being in a fear on a certain level comes from God indirectly, and we don't even notice it. I'm just telling you, it's, it's amazing. But as I look, I saw these things, man. I'm talking about this, the first one I saw was a giant, and it was like a reptile, like a reptilian look to it. I'm talking about muscles, huge. It got to be like 18 feet tall, 13 to 18 feet tall. These things are giants. Like, okay? And then some of them were small. There's this pen in my hand. Demons come in all sizes. They in all sizes, but they got the more, of a, a lot of them have a reptile look. They eyes, some of them eyes was red, some of them eyes was yellow, and they had a slit in them. All right? And they stink. The stench, the stench that I was smelling, it, it's like I'm telling you, every component is, man, it's, it's, but what got me was these people that was in the pits, they were trying to come out of the pit, and they were around the pits with these spear type things and all type of stuff, kicking them, laughing, and throwing them back in the pit. Some of these people look like pure skeletons that was burned. Some of them have flesh hanging off of them. Some of them look so tormented and beat. Yeah, it's deep, brother. It, it, it goes deep. It goes deep. And they were throwing them back in. And they screaming. But these pits go so far, as your eye can see. It had to be miles. And each pit had to be 100, 200 people in each pit. Okay, just a reference. That I'm just, you know, guesstimating, you know. Um, and it, it, it <laughs> man, it, like even when I recall it, I pause sometimes because it, it's, it's bad, man. It's bad. People down, even as we're speaking, even as we're speaking, it's happening. It's happening. Just like we're talking right now, we got brothers and sisters in prison, and our life goes on and moving around. Well, you got brothers and sisters and humanity in hell right now. And it's happening with or without your belief. Hell don't want you to believe in it because it'll get you there. How can you fight an enemy if you don't believe it exists? That means you already lost. So they want you to think it's a fairy tale. They want you to think it's a game. They want you to keep chasing this stuff that's temporary so you can spend eternity there. They want you to think it's a fairy tale. They don't want you to believe in it. So those who say, ah, oh, dude, cap and all, they say, okay. One thing that we all have in common as humans, we all going to die. So I'm not here. I don't have to debate my experience. I'm just trying to give a warning. I'm doing what the Lord put me here to do to give you a warning. I'm here to deliver the package, and it's up to you to do what you will with the package that's being delivered. I'm just dropping it off. So now as, 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 as I'm trying to get up, which I can't get up, I feel this big claw. I mean, talking about this hand was so big. It gripped my whole head, and it, it just threw me just like it was nothing. The strength of these things, man. It's nothing on earth. I don't care if you think you're the biggest, boldest, toughest, swollest. It don't mean nothing down there. You ain't, it's nothing. There's, a, you ain't doing nothing. I'm just telling you. And one thing when you're in eternity, you know everything. Meaning, I knew I was still on earth, but in a different dimension. It's still on earth, but it's in a different frequency. Just like right now, we have frequencies going through us right now. That you can't see, microwaves, radio waves, all kind, right? But you can't see them. There are literally different dimensions here on earth. And hell is on earth, but it's in a different, I just wanted to make that known. It is still here on earth, but it's in a different dimension. And these things got spiritual strength. Your physical thoughts and what you think, it don't mean nothing, man. These things, the way it threw me, and I hit this wall. It was like a mountain. But when I hit this wall and I looked up, there were cells like jail cells, old school jail cells, thousands of them, like a skyscraper. And I grew up in skyscrapers my whole life, taller than that. You know, I lived in skyscrapers on the 25th floor before, and it was higher than that, built in the side of a mountain. Okay, you got people in, in, in these cells. But one thing, like I was saying earlier, that you know everything in the spirit world, I knew that these people been in there since the biblical times, some of thousands of years, these people been in those cells. See? Literally, because people don't understand. We're so used to time. Time doesn't exist in eternity. It don't exist. Okay? Hope don't exist in that place. Okay? I've been locked up a couple of times. And let me tell you right now, when I was locked up, at least I had hope because I had an out date. Right? Okay, I only got eight more months left. Cool. I'm All right. Three more months. There's some hope start building up. But when you're there, there is no time. There is no out date. There is none of that. 
See, even that hope comes from God that we take for granted. That's what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> Woo. But as, right. as I'm, yeah, go ahead. Uh, that, that's uh, when you're in hell or, or heaven, it's eternity. It's forever. So yeah. You're getting out. No. And see, look, that's why I was, now that I'm looking back in hindsight, you ever seen that show Scared Straight? Oh, yeah. Or heard of that show? That's what the Lord was doing to me. Okay. Yeah, I heard you said you was kind of like in pre-hell. Mm-hmm. Because I thought that was hell. And that was beyond any terror that anybody can even begin to even fathom. And I thought that was it. I'm going to get to that in a second. Because when I, as, as I'm looking at the wall and I'm looking at people who are inside those cells, they were in there because they studied witchcraft, astrology. They were worshiping demons. See, there's different departments and compartments of hell. There's different sections, like you have in a maximum prison. You got different, you, you got different tiers. You got different parts of hell. Protective custody, different part, you know. But hell, it, the tortures get worse, worse. And you think it can't get no worse? Like I've seen these giants. The giants I was telling you about demons. They had these long spears. I call them human shish kebabs because they were taking people, sticking the poles through them. And come up the top of their head and they were stacking them three or four on these poles and they were picking them up, put them on their shoulder and walking off. I don't know where they was carrying these people, but I'm just telling Then I seen uh, ladies being raped by demons down there. I'm talking about there's nothing. Listen, hey, you know, you can watch the most worst pornographic movie and it don't come close to the tortures and the stuff that they were doing to these women in hell. Men as well, cutting off genitals. I'm not going to get too explicit, but I'm just telling you, I'm just going to get close as I can to being descriptive, but it's so horrible. Opening people's mouths, pouring lava down your throats, and then you regenerate. See, people don't understand. See, like here, we got it good if you don't go there, right? When you die, you just say if your arm get cut off, it get cut off. And it, and it, no, there, it comes right back. And you feel the same pain. They keep torturing you over and over again. They rip your tongue out, your tongue come back. They rip it out again, it's coming back. They rip your face off, your face grow back, and they do it. So it's just continuous. It's nonstop. And then they take turns, and they're having fun with it. That's why I want to tell people this. Why do you think we're always so angry, depressed, anxietyed out, overworked, stressed? Because it's demon food. I call it demon food because I learned when I was in hell, that's what they eat. They eat off that energy. They eat it. They get high off your depression. They get high off your anger. They get high off your confusion. They literally eat your misery. That is their food. That's why they constantly work on keeping you in those forms and states of mind so you can give off that energy and they're eating. They're feeding off of that. Literally. It's facts. I'm not here to make you believe, but I promise you, there's no reason why everybody's so stressed. I don't care how much money you have or don't have. The stress is there. The stress is there. For you know? Sure. And then lately, rich people have been committing suicide more than poor people. You think that's a coincidence? I'm just telling you, you all, this is real. So I'm just telling you, stop. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm not blaming everything on demons. Because we have to take accountability for our own actions. But what they, they don't have the authority to make us do anything. But what they do, they are good influencers. They are good manipulators to make you do these things. They pick at you and chip at you till your faith gets weak and then you choose to do wrong. You know, it's like, like I said before, it's like a fat man who's on a diet. Just say if I was trying to get on a diet, I want to lose some weight, right? I'm trying to eat right, but they can't force food down my throat. But you know what they'll do? They'll take me to a buffet. And let me smell the food and, and to the point where I get weak. Where I'm like, okay, one piece of pie ain't going to hurt. See, they're good manipulators and influencers. So we got to watch out. It's spiritual warfare. They try to do this and make you sin until you die. And that's the scary part. We don't know when we're going to die. So that's why you always have to be ready and active. Not, not get rich or die trying. Get God or die trying. Because you never know. You never know. See, all of that message just come from the pits of hell itself. And I'm just telling you, I saw pastors down there. I saw people of the, quote, church down there. But the most people that I've seen from my experience were gossipers, man. Mm. Gossipers. 
You know what they do to Oh. <laughs> See, listen. I noticed there's a theme in hell. Everybody sins on a big spectrum, you know, right? We right. sin, little sins, but everybody has a specialty sin. That's what I call it. Everybody has one sin that you like to do that sticks out more than whether it's drinking, whether it's just sexual, right? One, something in your personality that really has a specialty sin. And that's the sin that you're going to be toe off in hell with, mm, right? I got you. I got you. Do you see? You see what I mean? Yeah, your so specialty if sin. If you're a person that like to talk or gossip, when yep. you're in hell, you're going to get tortured for whatever that is. Yes, okay. that corresponding sin, whatever your yeah. specialty yeah. is. Because they was taking their tongues. Whoo. <laughs> they were taking their tongues and nailing them to, to tables. They were having these little, because you got demons like this big. Eating your tongues out. They got worms in there that eat your... Yeah, listen, man. The, the <laughs> things are so horrible. I'm just giving a descriptive as best as I can without... You know what I'm saying? Because I don't know. You know, I don't want to... But no, I, I'm just telling you. I'm thing. just telling you. The, the, the gossipers are getting it right now as we speak. That's why I say, if you don't... Don't speak about nobody's problem unless you're going to try to help about it. Mm. If you don't have any answers, you should not be gossiping to anybody else's issue. Unless you're trying to come up with a solution to help that brother or sister. Because I promise you, you're going to be held accountable for it. You are going to be held accountable for it. And if people always ask, so is God, God is not up there with no pen and pad writing what you do. You know how God knows? Two ways. First of all, he lives inside you. He's with you all the time. He's experiencing everything you experience. Because I know before, every time I'm going to do something wrong, I heard a voice say, hey, Dominic, you shouldn't be doing that, man. What you doing, man? And then the other one, like, hey, man, ain't nobody looking. Pull that lick, man. Ain't nobody going to know. See, the first guy was him inside you. So there's not going to be no excuse. Somebody can say, I didn't know. He's going to say, that's a lie because I told you. I the one who told you mm -hmm. to leave that day. I the one who told you not to talk to that person. It was me. See? And second of all, I call it your flesh snitches on you. In the scriptures, it says your own flesh will testify against you on the day of judgment. Well, that's exactly what happens. Your own flesh tells on you. Your own actions tell on you. So he's not, he doesn't have to sit up there and dictate what you do. He gives us free will. It's how you use that free will. And you're going to snitch on yourself. He don't have to have nothing written down because he lives in you. So uh, people need to be careful. I'm telling you. Though, and, uh, like I said, the most people I saw down there was the people who misused their tongue. Gossipers, right? Especially gossipers who just make stuff up out of the blue, to hurt somebody else. They don't know how powerful the tongue is. They don't know the tongue is, I mean, ruins lives. Oh, so many. So, so many. And the second, the most I've seen was unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. People down there because they didn't, they regret. I heard so many times, please give me five more minutes. I want to make it up to her. Or I want to just say sorry to them. I heard all over the same repetitious things, people, because they didn't forgive people. They didn't forgive people. And you know it. Yeah, brother, I'm trying to tell you. And see, demons like that because they, 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 they want you to die with unforgiveness on your heart. So you automatically disqualify yourself for heavenly bound, to be heaven bound, man. That's what I'm saying. It's all a trap. And you know what the demons was calling us? Stupid humans. Hmm. I'm just cleaning it up. It was worse than that. But I'm just saying, they okay. really, really think we're dumb. They really laugh at us. They laugh at our ignorance, man. They laugh at us so hard because we fall for the simplest tricks. We don't know spiritual warfare because we don't have a relationship with God. It's not about religion. It's about your personal relationship with the Lord. Do you know him mm. or you don't? You yeah, know? that was a question I was going to ask you too. Does the religion matter? Because a lot of people say they're not religious. They don't claim religions. Does the religion hey, matter? The only thing that matters, do you know Yahshua? Also known as Jesus Christ. There's no other nothing. There's no other way. I used to think, let me, I'm going to be honest, before all of this, man, I used to think Christianity, because I don't even like using the word Christianity, because he don't even use the word Christianity. Either you know him or you don't. But I used to think it was a trap. I thought it was a white people's religion. I thought it was, no, come to find out it's not. It's not at all. Not even close. Not even close. Not even close. 
Okay? It's not used just to scare you. It's not you. No, mankind has used that knowledge to do that. Yes, mankind has rewritten the Bible. I don't know how many times. Mankind has used it to control people. But no, no, no. All right, I'm going to give you this. The Lord, okay, there's only one Lord. But out of 1.8 million, I'm just narrowing it down. There are 1.8 million gods that are worshipped here on this planet. 1.8 million. Why is it that he's the only one being roasted, being made into a curse word, being disrespected? For real. Yahshua, Jesus Christ, is the only one who gets disrespected, right, who is hated the most on this planet. You think that's a coincidence? No. No. Why no. is that, though? Because they don't want you to get to him. Because if you get to him and get to know him, you're not going. He's not going to let you go to hell. He's not. And I know for a fact he pulled me out. And I wasn't even a full believer, but I was always searching for him. I was studying Islam. I was studying, I would be a black Hebrew Israelite. I was studying Santeria, all types of things, looking for him. And the whole time he already had found me. And that's what I want to tell people. If you ever have an inkling, just say, you know what? I want to find a higher power. I'm looking for God. That means he's already found you. He's already found you. I went way out okay. looking for him, and he was already right here. So people need to be very careful, you know. And it is about, it's not, it, you can't just go to anything to say, the biggest thing, they cheat you. And our people are spiritually lazy because we don't do our research, Okay. You need to research the religion that you're in, first of all. You need to really do your research because you're not worshiping the same God. You're not worshiping the Father God. You're not going through our Lord Jesus Christ. You say, oh, Allah is the same God as the Father. No. 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 That's moon worship. That's a whole other topic. That's what I'm saying. It's not, you can't just say God is God. No, there are 1.8 million gods here. Some, all of them, small G-O-D, but they're gods nonetheless, correct? All gods are right, not right. the same. Most of these are demons. Right. Most of these are demons. I, I, I'm telling you, firsthand experience, most of these are pure demonic forces and dark spirits and high principalities. There's nine principalities that run from the 200 fallen angels that run this planet. And, I, and hell is so organized. It is so organized. They got a spirit for everything. A spirit for doubt. Spirit for fear, spirit for intimidation. They got gangs, generals for everything that you're going through. Everything that you're going through, I can guarantee you it's the spirit behind it that's kind of prompting you to feel that way. So, so let me ask you this. How did, how did your experience in hell end? Like, how did you get out of that situation? And it was the Lord, you know, and that's the whole thing. I never saw him one time. I never saw him. I never sat there and say, oh, we had a conversation. No, no, no. He took me around. This is the last part. I was standing on a cliff, and there were people on the side of the left side and right side. When I was standing on this cliff, I looked over. I saw this path, and it looked like a dead forest, and it was like a sand, but these trees were dead. They were like gray, like they'd been burned, and, but the sand was black and gray. But when I looked up, there was these gates in this castle thing. The, the gates had to have been like 80 to 100 feet tall, old rusted gates. But this castle like thing, I knew instantly. And I already went through all of this stuff. Like I thought I was in hell already and the mm -hmm. fear and all that. No, when I looked and saw that, I knew that was the real hell. So what I went through was orientation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Think about that. They just think about the levels and the, the, the severity just in orientation. But when I looked at that, I knew once I passed those gates, over with. Done. There's no reconciliation. How instant did your life change after that? Yeah. Well, you know, it didn't change right away because I, I, I was so fearful. I end up, it ended up kind of backfiring at first. I ended up drinking more alcohol because I had PTSD from the experience of hell. So, but it took time. It took, it took time for the Lord to start building. But he started showing me everything. He started showing me who to hang with, who not to hang with. I just automatically started vibing different because you all, you don't know how important it is. You, whoever you hang around is what you become. Period. You will never see an eagle flying with a pigeon. 
I'll repeat. I'm going to say that one more time. You will never see an eagle flying with a pigeon. They both birds, true enough, right? But they're totally right. two different species with two different sets of attributes. So if you're trying to become a millionaire, why would you hang around bums? If, you, if you're trying to become angelic, why would you hang around demons? Right? If you're trying to become sober, why would you hang around addicts? See? So lo- slowly, he would start, he gravitated me personally, and I started seeing him. See, when God talks, you don't hear no voice from the sky, hey, son, dollar, dollar. No, it don't work like that. When he talks, things move in your life. That's how powerful he is. When he talks, things shift. Everything starts to shift for you. That's his voice. He's so powerful, his voice is experience. See, I went to inf- from information to knowledge. I went from knowledge to wisdom. And I thought wisdom was it. I thought, you know, that, no, no. Experience trumps all of those. Because that's where the Father lives, through living it. That's why the Lord always says be a living example. He didn't say be a reading example or talking. No, he said be a li- you have to live the word. You just can't read the scriptures and think your life's going to change. No, no. You read those and then you try to apply them and see if it works. Read those things and say, try it out and watch. When you express them, when you're living, that's when the power comes. That's when change comes. So the more and more I start reading the scriptures and applying it, the more he gave me downloads to know how to move and start moving different, start thinking different, start arresting my thoughts, stop having self-doubt, stop fearing stuff. You know what I mean? So I mean, it changed significantly mm-hmm. after that, but it took a process. And I know why it took long is because he wanted the concrete in me. Another thing real quick, people forget they ask God for stuff. But they think they, God gives them stuff the way humans give you stuff. Like, I always ask God back in the desk, I need patience. God, just give me the patience. You know what God did to me? He put me in the most impatient situations. Mm. <laughs> I said, I thought I asked you for patience. And he said, I'm giving you patience. I said, how is that possible if you put me more un- intolerable, impatient situation? Then it clicked. I had to earn it. See, when God gives you a gift... Once you earn it, it becomes a part of your character, your attributes. It's solid. It becomes a part of your fiber of your being. It's a true upgrade. It's not a temporary gift. It's an upgrade. You see what I mean? And a lot of people forget when they ask God for stuff and then trauma comes in their life and they blame the devil. They blame. No, God did that because it's a blessing in that. It's always a blessing in a crisis. No matter how. I learn stuff through good times, but I learn my real true wisdom through them hard times, through them hard knocks of life. That's what, it's always a gift in that. So he's always reaching out to us, you all. And don't fall for the okie doke. Don't fall for the illusions of a quick fix, quick money. All of this stuff is about to collapse, honestly, anyway. It's time to prepare for eternity. I'm not here to, 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 to debate anybody. I'm just here to drop off a package, and it's up to you to do what you will with it. But time is short. You know, last month we just lost six brothers. One month. One month. And my guy, rest in peace to him, and, and, and I hope he, he had a great relationship with the Lord, but he just died uh, two weeks ago now. Kenny was the last one that passed away. Kenny Farr, much blessings to him and his family. But um, they're they dropping out here like it's nothing, okay? From these drugs and from these bullets. Yeah. I'm just That's telling I wanted you. you to, I wanted you to tell your story for... You know, for everybody, but mainly the younger generation, because my generation is is dying and living at a uh, at a rate that's that's alarming. Yeah. And you know why? Because the enemy time is short. Okay, so what he's doing is speeding up the process, and everybody's falling for it. Music. Okay, I'm going to tell you what the Lord says. This is for the younger generation and for the older generation, because you got a lot of older people who's listening and doing the same thing the younger generation is doing, which is crazy to me. The Lord said, protect your gates. Your gates are your eyes and your ears. Because your eyes and your ears are the portals to your soul. So when you take in things, when you're watching things, you're listening to things, it's influencing your soul. Okay? So he said, protect your gates. So now if you young guys and and women are listening to all day, blast, 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 cast, 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 blank, 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 all day long. That's all you're listening to. Your soul is getting so corrupted and so filthy 
Your actions, you don't even know how you act anymore. Your action, your spiritual reflex is now demonic. Because it's all demonic. It's, it's only two lanes here. It's light and dark. There's no middle lane. Right and wrong. Up and down. Left and right. That's it. There's no, there's no, no nothing else to it. And when you bombard yourself with this music and watching these type of movies, you're becoming infected. The same way if I had COVID and coughed on you, you would get it too. Or if I had the flu or it, you know, anything, you become becoming contagious. So it's spreading around. And I'm telling this generation right now, this is the most technological uh, uh, society that we have had known to man thus far. Okay, well, you can get everybody that has information, anything. All you got to do is grab your phones. You can get any information like this, right? You can just type it in, anything. Anything you want, negative or positive, smart or dumb. Okay, so that's, and that's adding to your confusion, okay, because people are taking opinions from other people, other things without research, and you can say, oh, it was just on the Google, it was on the Internet, so it's true. No, it's taking you further and further away from that voice I was talking about earlier about God inside you. It's a distraction. The name of the game, people, is distracting you. It's called distracting you to the point until you die. The distraction is from God, right? It's keeping you away from God. If these demons, the whole goal is to make sure to make bad look good and good look bad. That's what's happening now. So if you're good trying to spread the word, they think you're corny. Oh, this brother corny or this sister corny. They cheesy and this and that. But it's cool to be evil now. It's cool to be evil. Let me give an example. In my day, when something was, 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 was good, we say, oh, that was cold. That was cold. And then it became, oh, that's hot. That's hot. Then all of a sudden it graduated to, that's fire. That's fire, right? And then it graduated to, oh, I'm beast mode. That's beast. And then now it's just pure demon time. Do you see, right. do you see how they sneaking in and say the, the, the demonic energies you are? And you subconsciously don't even know right before you to the point where you're saying, I'm on demon time? Yeah. See, and it all started from cold. I was there. Like I say, I've been through the transit of all these generations. I'm seeing it. And I'm just like, wow, how these words are transforming and they steer to this demonic realm. Look at all the symbols and stuff that people are wearing. Upside down crosses are cool now. You see what I'm saying? The 666 and all of this stuff, people don't understand. Right? They, then they try to come with some mathematical formula. Oh, it means the melanin and the atoms and all. No, man, listen, man. It's all an illusion. None of that stuff don't count in eternity. Your melanin don't count because you don't have a physical body. The only thing that counts is what you're worth spiritually. Why you think, look at all these rappers that die. They have a one to two year lifespan. Most of them, right? You notice that? Somebody come out with the new so-and-so, right. gone. And then guess what? They influence millions of people. So they did their job, take them off the map. See, Lucifer put up a new one. They influence so, so many million people, gone. Put up a new one. It's all about catching souls, you all. It's all about distractions. So this younger generation, stop chasing things of material wealth because you know what? They don't last, and you're never going to get enough of it. You're going to end up being depressed. Why do you think all your favorite rappers and actresses are drug heads behind the scenes? They tweakers. I'm going to put it that way. I'm going to speak in the street. They tweaking. Behind the scenes. But they smiling on camera. Fake stuff that they rent. Look at my mansion. Look at all this stuff. That's rented. That's not real, you all. Most of these people, only out of all the rappers and entertainers, about 93.5% are really rich from it. Everything else, they in debt. They in debt. Don't look at Forbes and have them lie to you. They in debt. It's all in losing to trick you. So your whole attention is to get rich. And guess what? You're going to die and guess where you're going? And they don't believe it. I, I, I'm just trying to tell you all this is real. So this new generation, you guys really need to start listening to that voice that's inside you because you can't say to God that you didn't know because he's going to say, I told you. You can't say, oh, I didn't have a Bible. I didn't read no Bible. But yet you got every video game. You got every new, new gym shoe, Jordans that's cost beyond, uh, blows my mind. How people don't even have a car, but you can spend seven hundred to a thousand dollars on a pair of shoes. <laughs> For real, <laughs> you living with your mama or living with your baby mama, but you got the best clothes on. You ain't even got a bank account, nor a driver's license. 
Right? But you look good, though. Right? You got the chains on, fake chains, bumping your neck out. Everybody sitting there walking around trying to impress you. This new generation, you got tight jeans, can't even run. You know, these mugs walking like mannequins. Oh, Lord. <laughs> yeah, they, I'm just being truthful. I'm just being honest. No, they real, got it. Satan got it. Yeah, Satan got us backwards. And we think it's cool. We honor him with something. It's goofy. For real. You got people out here literally with, with an outfit on that's worth two, $3,000, but they living with somebody else. They ain't even got their own homes. That's Man, the mindset crazy. of the new generation. And they think that's cool. No, that's demonic. It's slow. It's backwards. And then everybody else having sex with everybody else. The STDs is off the chain. I'm sure they're going to have a new STD coming up soon called bread mold or something where you wake up and it looks like bread mold on your genitals. I'm just telling you. I ain't, I'm just saying, listen, it's getting so bad out here, you all. I just want y'all to wake up. Wake up and do the time challenge. I created something where the Lord used me to create something called the time challenge. Every day get a notebook, and it's, up to, it's just between you and yourself. Before you go to bed, you write the date, and you put the world or God. Which one had more of your time that day? Was it the world or was it God? And at the each, end, end of each week, you look up and see who won your week. Who won your time? Was you, was you trying to spend it with God or were you trying to impress the world? You know, and then that's another thing. One more thing. Why do we try to impress people who don't even care about us? People wearing shoes, girls getting their hair done, makeup, all of this stuff, just to see somebody. We ain't nobody thinking about you after 15 seconds. Right. After 15 seconds of seeing you, you think somebody sitting around that next week saying, hey, did you see what's his face makeup that day? Or did you see so-and-so outfit? No. So you're going through all of this trying to impress people for a few seconds to feel like you're doing something and it's just an illusion? Hmm. Come on, you Smoking all. Here. It's time to think It's time to think better, man. It's time to think better, you all. I'm not here to judge because I used to be the same way. I used to be the same exact way. So I'm not, I'm, I, I ain't too good. I'm just saying where I came from mentally and spiritually. I used to be the same way. So I know how I feel. You know what I'm saying? And I know how it is. But that's not the way you are. I'm just blessed to be here to be able to tell you guys to leave it alone. All right, man. I, I appreciate you uh, telling that story and um, well, telling your story. And um, well, what do you got planned for 2024 and beyond? Oh, yeah, you all, um, we just put up a new website. It's called Blessed to Be Chosen, uh, www.blessedtobechosen.com. I have my new book coming out. I already have two books out. One is on Amazon called The Toughest Enemy in Life You Have Is You. The second one is in Barnes & Noble called Passport to Eternity. And my third one to be out is called Spiritual Currency, which would be true, the whole story in true detail. There are a lot of things that I can't say on here about my experience. It's called Spiritual Currency. It'll be out in Barnes & Noble in May. And, uh, yeah, I'm speaking all over the place. Um, the Lord has blessed me. I'm speaking in jails, uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, different platforms I've been coming on. But I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to be all over the country. Uh, we got people from all over the world who are reaching out. So not right now, I have uh, the Lord has blessed me with a good team, a good staff. So I'm getting a lot of things in order. So uh, God willing, you guys will be hearing a lot more from me. But you can reach me. You can email me at the Narrow Path Society at gmail.com. Or you can also email me at blessed to be chosen seven uh, at gmail.com if you want to get in contact with me. Uh, we need everybody's help. We do. We need volunteers because we're a street ministry as well. You know, uh, in, in whatever city you in, you know, we, we can help put together something, but we can always study. You can call. Uh, the number is 763-447-8562. It's a 24-hour number that you can call for prayer or just call if you need help. We'll be here to answer and help you, my brother. And I, I really appreciate you, what you're doing. I hope to keep in contact with you, man. And, um, yeah, keep doing what you're doing, man. This is a blessing. I'm glad you had me on here, man. My connection just did something so crazy. But, yeah, uh, I appreciate no, it's you. it's okay. Uh, yeah, if you said something, I probably missed something because my, I don't know what happened to my connection just then. But, uh, see, that's the, that's the devil trying to win. 
But yeah. Hey, the platforms I've been going on, people are like, yo, I never had this happen. On Like, weird stuff start happening because they don't want me to get the message out there. You see what I mean? Yeah. You know? No, it's the first time this ever happened to me. And I'm like, man, what's going see? on? See? I keep hearing that. Yeah, I keep hearing that that's because crazy. that's the Holy Spirit. They don't want people to get the message, man. But I'm, I'm going to link all your information um, in the description okay. so people can check you out. And uh, I appreciate you coming on, man. You have man, a blessed thank day. Thank you, my brother. You as well, yeah. brother. Stay blessed. Right. I appreciate right. it, man. Peace.